it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> we took a very leisurely morning, um, which was very much enjoyed by me. <clears throat> and we're just now getting out. Our number one mission for the day is to go see Michelangelo's David, which I'm super stoked about. That's going to be really cool. That was one of the things pretty high on my list of must do's. So that'll be really neat. And then other than that, we don't have any. We have one thing. Uh, we're going to the Ponte Vecchio. Ponte Vecchio, what's that? It. It's a medieval stone bridge with shops lining the Yeah. Edges. Okay, yeah, that's going to be really cool. That was something that we're we... going now. Okay, great. We're going to the uh, the bridge first. That's going to be really cool. That was also on our list of things that we wanted to do. So we had a, a light breakfast and then an early light lunch. So we're going to have an early dinner out somewhere, probably at another sit down restaurant. Then. We're just going to decide what we want to do. I want to go back to a, sorry, I'm no, trying not to film everybody. I want to go back to a supermarket and see if we can find those um, deliches because I really want to take some home to everybody. So anyway, that's all on our agenda. And then we're just going to walk around and see what else we want to do. Do we, do we have a timed entry for the thing to see? Michael at one o'clock. All right. And so. it's a whole art museum. Right. It's just right. That. Michael. David. <laughs> I said Michael because <laughs> Michelangelo. Anyway, um, it's a whole art museum. It's not just David there, but that's what I'm most excited about. So I will show you guys around that. As I think I've mentioned, this is our last full day of like exploring. Tomorrow we are going to be having a train travel day. We're going to travel by train back to Rome and then by train um, to the airport um, and then spend the night there at the airport hotel and then the next day we're going home. It's a long day of um, flying places. So anyway, that's what's up. How cute. Cute. I love the little plants. So cute. So here's the bridge. This is the medieval bridge. There's another bridge down there. That's what we're going to walk to first and get, get a good look at the bridge and then we'll come around this way and cross the bridge from that way this way. This is really cute. So something else that I've noticed is in Italy, the colors of the buildings all tend to be about like that. They don't typically have any like bright colored buildings. They occasionally have white. That's like kind of like an off white, but usually they're these like earthy tones kind yeah, of nothing very dark yeah unless it's stone nothing pastel yeah nothing bright yes oh yeah these good earth tones lots of yellows and orange and tan and, yeah. yeah i just think it's so beautiful rome is beautiful but i think i prefer florence personally So that's the bridge. It's the Ponte Vecchio, which means old bridge okay. in Italian or something close to that. They think there's this has been a crossing of this river, which is the Arno River, since before Roman times, because it's a fairly narrow wow. spot. There have been multiple bridges there. There's a, probably a Roman bridge there. Um, but over time, a lot of the bridges that they would build this is common anywhere would get knocked down by flood or they're made mostly of wood and they would burn this bridge was built in the middle of the 14th century i think somewhere around 1340 or 1350 yeah uh, and it's been 
the stone part of the bridge has been there since then, so wow. for almost 700 years. The buildings on the top, there have been buildings there probably since shortly after it was built, but I don't, we don't know the history of the specific buildings. Probably a lot of them were built, burned, demolished, rebuilt, that kind of thing. Yeah. You can obviously tell that the style of the buildings on the bridge is more modern than the medieval the stone construction yeah, underneath sure. it. So you can pause this and read this if you'd like. But it's talking about this bridge here that we were, it's talking about this bridge here that we were just on. It was originally built in 1252 and then destroyed by the Germans during World War II. So then it was rebuilt in 1958. So that's incorrect. It, there was a bridge here built in the 1200s, but then there's a flood in 1557 and oh. Duke Cosimo had a, had a new bridge built and then the builders put these statues on the Oh, side. okay, okay. Wrong me. And then it was destroyed by the Germans okay. and rebuilt. So built and then rebuilt by Cosimo de' Medici. Yeah, after a flood. After a flood. And then, re and then rebuilt in 1958 after it had been destroyed by the Germans. So was destroyed by the Germans years. and then was rebuilt in 1958. So that's cool. This is so cute. I love it. How cute is this? Mm -hmm. You can smell the, I don't know if these are pine or what, but you can smell them, they smell good. Oh. This hotel has bicycles you can rent. I, I don't ride bicycles, but that would be fun. I don't ride bicycles because the first time, not the first time, the last two times I rode a bicycle, once I broke my jaw and the second time I ran into a boat. So I don't- The only two times you've ridden a bike? No, I rode a bike a lot before I broke my jaw. And then the very next time I rode a bike, um, I ran into a boat. A boat? On land. You might ask, how can that happen? But, you know, it, uh, if accidents can happen, I will manage to have it. There's the bridge, the medieval bridge that we're headed towards. I just think this little place is so cute. So there's a, there's a hotel here apparently. So if I ever came back, it would be so cool to stay right here. I imagine it's expensive. I have something to say. Okay. Um, so, you know, Rome had more of the like touristy, historical, whatever things like the Colosseum and the Pantheon and St. Peter's Basilica and all those things, which were fantastic. But I think Florence is my favorite because I just like walking around and looking at how cute it is. And I don't know, I just really like it. Like aesthetically, it's um, really, I mean, Rome was beautiful too, but this one's even more beautiful to me. And um, we were just talking about how in Rome, there was a lot of like litter and trash everywhere. And there's still some here, you know, like there isn't any city, but it's much, much less than we saw in Rome. So that's just, you know, that's just a little part of it. But anyway, I just think I like Florence the best. Wait, here we are on the bridge. There's the cathedral in the background there. Lots of little shops on either side. Lots of jewelry apparently right here. Oh, and up there too. That's interesting. Wow, lots of jewelry on this bridge for sale. It's just really cool to be walking on and amongst something this old very crowded as you can see yeah jewelry everywhere that's interesting wonder why all right there's the bridge we were on earlier 
and we're standing on the medieval bridge. There's that road we walked down. So we walked down that way, across there and all the way up there. Ah, oh, just so beautiful. I just love it so much. I could just sit here all day long and just look at it. I mean, I wouldn't be allowed to, but I wish I could. All right, here's the other direction. Sorry about the wind. Stunning. Very nice, very nice. Beautiful. 10 out of 10. I just love it so much. Remember about Um, No, this is going to be way too expensive for me. <laughs> also, I don't really wear jewelry anyway. So, anyway, so I'll go ahead and say the whole bridge um, has shops of jewelry. Let's look at. Let's look at some of these prices. Wow. Can you see prices on anything? Um, on a, not much. I saw up here, one of those little crosses, uh -huh. like 545 yeah, euros, 175. Yeah, so. Pure gold, I guess. Absolutely. They say. Yeah. Well, anyway, no jewelry for me. But if you want jewelry and you're in Florence, apparently this is the place to be. Yeah, a lot of that really uh, that beautiful food. Yeah, 100%. All right, here's the other side of the bridge. <laughs> so cool. That's cute. He's gonna eat some tiramisu. This is very different from the tiramisu at the other place. So that's interesting. Okay, so one of the things I haven't been the happiest with um, since being here is coffee. The co coffee is very important to me. Um, but I've been drinking cappuccinos and um, I, we stopped at this little cafe and I got a cafe americana. Americano. Cafe americano and it's um, espresso and water. And then I put cream and sugar in it and oh, it's so good. It's like delicious. So. Yeah. Um, 10 out of 10, should have been drinking these the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> that guy waved. He waved. In Galleria de Academia. And somewhere in here we're going to see David. I'm really excited. I'll show you around. Sure, yeah, absolutely. This is Annunciation. Again, any of this stuff, pause if you'd like to read about it. Ooh, yikes. He's going to look at the sculpture. He's going to look at I'm impressed with all these, like how all the colors are so bright, but I guess they've been like restored and stuff, yeah, right? I, I would imagine. This is the oil of the wood. Yeah. Fifteen hundred. Wow. The idea that two fingers is a piece sign. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Wouldn't that be funny then? Yeah. He's just going, he's... Well, I don't understand. What's the flag? Uh, what is the flag? It's like the reverse of Switzerland. Yeah. I don't recognize that one. Hmm. It's just fascinating to me to see works of art that are literally so old. <laughs> It's just really amazing, oh, the light. Amazing. You can see obviously that this one's splintered. This is tempera on a wooden panel. Okay guys, this is super cool. This is made, I guess, for people who are blind or visually impaired, and you're allowed to touch it. You can touch it and feel the scene. And then over here they've got, um, 
real writing about it. That is so cool. I love that. Here's another one, you guys. I just think this is such an awesome... Yeah, see? And it says you can touch it. So it's for people who are blind or visually impaired. I just think that's the greatest thing. Amazing. Love it. This is the music section. Wow. Sixteen fifty? Yeah. That's not this, this sixteen fifty. Grand Prince Ferdinando de Medici. Uh -huh. who lived from 1665 to 1713. He was the son of Cosimo III, uh, who had one of the most extraordinary collections of musical instruments in Europe, which has been largely lost. Several of the most important pieces were entrusted to the Music Conservatory of Florence and are exhibited here. Wow. Alongside 17th century paintings depicting musical life in the wow. court of Ferdinando. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Wow. Violoncello. Wow. I mean, to be in the presence of something like this. We both really love music. And... Oh my gosh. Amazing. So this is the violoncello of the Medici Quintet from 1690. Incredible. I mean, incredible. Holy moly. Tenor viola of the Medici Quintet, 1690. Incredible. Holy moly. Amazing. Like, incredible. Double bass, 1715. <laughs> mm, massive. And look. Let me see if I can zoom in on these strings at all. So you can see these two on this side. There's some kind of metallic material and these are not. Amazing. So Stradivari, I just heard, was the like one of the best stringed instrument makers of all time. So this, we've learned, this is the Medici Viola made by Stradivari, who I've talked about briefly. It's the only Stradivari instrument, instrument. In, instrument in the world still in its original condition. So they made a lot of alterations to them later to help like improve the sound and everything. And this is the only one that's in its original the, condition. One of the main modifications that a lot of them, a lot, them underwent was the bending of the angle of the fingerboard there. You can see how it's pretty straight up and down, whereas a lot of other instruments like this cello, I think, you can see the angle of the fingerboard is, is bent backwards more. A pair of hurdy gurdies, 1775. So this one was made by the guy that invented the piano. Incredible. And this is the earliest upright piano in existence. Crazy. I mean, incredible. The earliest upright piano that exists anywhere ever. Okay, that was fantastic. We loved it. Incredible. Um, potentially one of the most, like, best, most historic collections of music anywhere. Of course, we don't know that for a fact, but it's possibly. Tons of pieces it's by Stradivarius. Yeah. Uh, the tons, uh, the inventor of the piano. The inventor of the piano has stuff in there. The oldest upright piano. Ever. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Um, oh, the only um, original Stradivari. Yeah, that hasn't been anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we left that part onward.
So all these these four statues were commissioned to Michelangelo and he started working on them and then he he died and never finished them. <clears throat> We were just talking about how cool it is to see some of these that were in progress because you kind of see how he like did it and you know but and look at the detail in the knee i mean it's just really incredible and here's david i keep accidentally calling him michael because <laughs> michelangelo made him just Amazing. I'm going to get up closer, but I wanted to get a shot with it all on camera. Just amazing. Just incredible. Incredible. Look at his ribs. You see his ribs? I mean, the detail is incredible. We're done in there. So that was amazing. Loved it. I got a few, just a couple little souvenirs for myself. Um, I'll show you later, but not right now. Um, so now we're going to head back to the hotel, chill a little bit, and then go out to dinner. One last view of the cathedral. All right, we're back. And here are the um, souvenirs I got. I just loved seeing David. It was just so impressive and I wanted to remember it. So a thousand piece puzzle. This is gonna be really challenging, but I think will be really fun. And then I got me a little mini David statue because it's just a nice way to remember the trip and to remember seeing it. So let me get it out here. There he is. You know, here's my hand for a reference of size. Um, so I just think that's really cool. I really liked it. I wanted it, so I'll display that somewhere. And uh, definitely packing at home, I'm going to put some of my socks in here to really pad it and then hopefully get it in my backpack and not my checked luggage. But we'll see. All right, we're out. We're headed to a specific destination um, for dinner. I'll probably uh, film a Facebook video there, um, but I will also um, put a little bit um, on the vlog for you guys. I know that y'all have seen this before, but I just love it. I just think it's so cute. And I just think all this is cute even in the rain. <sighs> Alright guys, here's what our restaurant looks like. It's really cute. There's not outdoor seating in this one, which is fine because it's cold and rainy. It's cute. We're at Casa del Vin Santo. Alright, he's going to try this uh, goat cheese with honey. Yeah, we love this. 
Is it really hot? <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. He likes it. Hey, everybody. Um, I forgot to film anything up until now. Um, but we have made it. So it's 2 o'clock. We've made it to Rome, to the train station in Rome. And we're waiting on our train to the airport. Um, it's just never gonna stop so everything's okay now oh my gosh but I just had to sprint back to our train a long way because I left my purse on the train and it had my passport in it <laughs> um, so we had gotten all the way off the train walked a ways and then I realized I didn't have it so um, that would have been so horrible but i got it and it's all okay now and i got my workout in for the day all right everybody we made it to the airport hotel i am worn out from my sprint to get my bag which had my passport in it so um yeah we're gonna stay the night here and then in the morning we're gonna start our very 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 long day of flying home so thank you so much for watching the trip, everybody. Uh, I had a wonderful time and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Let me know what you did enjoy and let me know what you'd like me to show more of next time. Bye.